Today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Today we're going to be doing something very special. I'm going to be playing your games and giving you feedback on how you can improve and polish and just make your games better. Now, a lot of people said to roast them. There's going to be no roasting here. This is a roasting free environment, but I will give you... All right, we ready? Let's get started. Alrighty, so the first game we're going to be playing today is called Propulsion. Um, this is actually made by another game dev YouTuber uh, called Chatterbox. So if you want to see kind of how this game was made, make sure to check out his channel. All right, let's get into it. Ooh. So I like the graphics. Um, I think it's cool, like the floating world area. I know I'm like kind of ruining my time right now, but we'll get into it. Anyway, let's just get started with the game and see what happens. All right. Okay. There we go. All right. Watching the trailer of the video, I could see like, once you get the momentum on this game, it's fun. Like it seems like, <laughs> oh gosh, I can't even see. Whoa. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So when I shoot, it launches me when I'm in air. Okay. So if I jump and then do that. So it seems like jumping helps with a propulsion, which makes sense. I didn't realize you could dash in this game. So the first time I played it, I was like, why can't I not? I couldn't make jumps. Ooh, okay. That feels pretty good. I would work on your, uh, maybe mixing your audio a little bit more. The music's pretty loud and the sound effects, like you think an explosion sound effect would be pretty loud. The music's pretty good. It's got, it's pretty funky. Whoa. Oh. Do I only have so many shots? That's sweet. I didn't realize that. So I need to make it over there. So can I just make that jump? Um, can I do this? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it is interesting to me how you can propel yourself by shooting backwards. Like, it feels like you get the most momentum when you do that. But it's incredibly awkward to shoot backwards because you can't see where you're going. But I don't know what the, a good solution to that would be. And also in the tutorial it talks about how like you, you need to jump. If you keep jumping and running, how you build momentum. But that's kind of awkward to like move, hold, move forward, hold shift, and then jump and then shoot. You're asking the player to do a lot at once. So maybe that simplifies. Maybe, maybe just maybe you don't jump as much or maybe there's some jumps like because the jump is so weak maybe you have a little bit of a higher jump so for basic platforming you can uh oof oof so maybe for some like basic platforming stuff you could still do it just with a regular jump and for momentum all you have to do is hold shift but i do feel like you're asking the player for quite a bit all right so i have to bounce oops <laughs> What if instead of um, having to shoot a platform, what if you just even had to shoot down? Like, because being able to shoot in air would be awesome, like a rocket jump. And the idea of actually having to hit the, the ground to get launched, it's a little awkward. Because I have to like line up my back and be like, okay, here we go. Like that feels great. Like when you're able to actually move quickly in this game, this game feels great. Like it, and the music's upbeat. It just makes you feel like, it makes you pumped. Um, but I feel like I'm just having a hard time getting the controls to go where I, I need to go. And maybe if you could aim further back, like you could, I don't know how, maybe there's like a camera angle where you can look back or something easily. Whoa. Okay. See, that felt sweet. If that's the coolest part, like one thing I really like th uh, about this game and what really caught my interest with it is just like the fast paced movement of like being able to learn the mechanics and just try to play through the level as fast as you possibly can. Like, whoa, okay, got that. Like that, that felt great. So I think it might just be coming down to, I don't know, just playing with the, the, the controls a little bit so they don't fight you as much. I like the idea of that you have to limit yourself on how many shots you have because it, it, it creates a puzzle aspect to it. It's hard because I feel like you can't introduce too many new mechanics right now because I'm, I'm still just trying to get the base mechanics. But I could see how you could add like moving platforms and 
lava and different hazards. Oh man, I keep doing that. I'm not sure why that didn't. Uh... Get... <laughs> I reset the level. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, I didn't have that. Uh oh. Uh oh, it's all going downhill here. <laughs> I think the game has a lot of potential, and it's cool to see like how you have random levels. You can just jump in, and like, look at the artwork is sweet. Like, I love the snow. I love the different environments. I think just continue to work on it, but really, like, just tighten those controls. And I know if that sounds vague, sim just simplify the controls. Do you need to be holding dash, or can you just be dashing the whole time? Can you give your give your jump a little bit more oomph to it? Just think of those things. It's very fine tuning, but. Great work, fantastic work, and uh, I can't wait to see how the game evolves in the future. So, awesome job. Now, before we move on to our next game, I just wanted to briefly talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Making your own website or online store can be a huge pain in the butt from scratch. Believe me, I've done it many times before. And the best way to cut the hassle is to use Squarespace. From selling your products online, making a portfolio or gallery of your work, or even something as tedious as image scaling, is so much easier and saves you so much time with Squarespace. As the internet expands, I truly believe that everyone should have internet real estate, but creating your own website doesn't mean you have to be disconnected from social media. With Squarespace, you can connect your social profiles so that way you can instantly post on different platforms, making it fantastic and easy to post your new product or game. Make sure to go check out squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready and you're all set to launch go to squarespace.com slash goodgus to save 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or domain Alrighty, so now we're gonna be playing the lost onion by it's heavy i've actually got to see this game kind of progress uh heavy's been posting it in patreon uh discord channel so i'm excited to see how it's changed it already looks beautiful and it's in godot so you know there's some there's some favoritism so so you gotta shoot and reload i like the little squish animations that's cute let's see oh okay how do i talk to this person oh you press e hello welcome to the lush cave oh so the down key for me is e oh oh no oh no now to be fair i wanted to preface that a lot of these games are also in development so I'm not going to be nitpicking if there's some little bugs and stuff like that because what you really want is overall feel and, and style. So if you see bugs like that or if you're watching you see bugs, don't worry. It's in development, guys. It's interesting how you have to reload pressing R and when you reload it only reloads one. I almost feel like maybe think about like when you fire, it automatically reloads, but it takes a second. Whoa! I don't know, the audio, it sounds like the audio is overlapping itself, it got really loud there. I need crazy mushroom. Ow! One thing I would work on is making it so it doesn't play a sound if that sound's already playing. Whoa! Okay, that's pretty cool. It's interesting, so you got a wall slide as well. I, I First off, I haven't even talked about this, but I love the visuals. Like, it has such a great look to it. Now, some people don't like this, and I used to uh, be against this too, of like doing nice smooth animations for pixel art, but I think it works really well with the style and keep it up. All right, so let's get, go down to the cave. Whoa. Whoa, that was, that was a cool transition. I didn't know there was a transition there. That was, that was sweet. Oh, whoa. Whoa, oh, man. I can definitely tell, maybe I'm wrong, but it feels like you come from more of a artist background. Like, I just love, even the animations of the, the bat losing its wings and stuff like that. Very, very cool. It feels satisfying when you hit it. Sound design is pretty cool. It would be awesome if there's like ambience, like cave dripping noises, and then even some music as well. Don't feel like you need to use like bit crush noises, because like the popping sound that you're using for dialogue isn't bit crush. Feel free to use real sounds because I think they add so much to a game, especially a game like this, and use some ambience. Like go j just find some cave ambience, You'll find that it'll add so much more to to the game. I love like from the last I've seen this, like I love how the games turn out. That would be cool having like a text prompt. Like I said, these could be things that you're already working on. I just don't know, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say them. You know, I'm gonna avoid that water area. The water looks cool though. I don't wanna get camped by that bat. Oh, get back. What's it? Oh, it's a key. I see. Okay. So I just got two keys. Well, another thing you, you might want to consider, I noticed that I'm getting hung up on platforms. 
because your character is like the same size as the the environment you want to really make his hitbox like pretty small I, I honestly love the environment i feel like the game is in it still feels in my mind it still feels kind of early on in development but it feels like you're starting to get a good foundation i would just work on keep polishing what you have like the player feels pretty good let's wait for the elevator to let me back up i don't know if you're planning on adding uh wall jumping or anything but i honestly think that you don't need you don't need like wall sliding if you don't have wall jumping because it just i feel like i'm hitting the wall a little bit too much and see like right there i can't get my full jump so maybe make it a little bit harder to do because i keep like trying to get back up here it's it's hard like i feel like I, i'm getting stuck on everything oof oof i must not have my uh whoa <laughs> i don't know what happened there but that was crazy oh that's cool your dash recharges when you're on the ground either way i feel like the game is in a really good place like I feel like, art, like I said, art-wise, you're doing a great job. I noticed that there's some player jitteriness when he moves. Uh, not sure if that has to do with collision boxes. I'm not sure what type of collision shape you're using. I just noticed that the legs actually animate, which are, that's so cool. Try to make the character a little bit more, like slide through areas a little bit better. I would make his jump. Here's here's a big one. Make it so it's on. He only jumps when you press it, not when you hold it. Cause I think that's also hard when you're jumping around. I'm getting stuck, I'm sliding. I would also look into variable jumping. That's really crucial cause um, I'm jumping the same height every time. Just look into it. It's There's a lot of great tutorials on variable jumping. And then the main thing for the combat is not having to reload. It's I feel like I'm smashing R when I'm shooting and I can see kind of the mechanics of why you're doing that, but it just, it doesn't feel fun. I feel like it gets in the way of the fun, but great work. This is this is awesome. I'm excited to see where the game goes in the future. And in, in some parts of it, I'm like, man, this like inspires me for my own game. So fantastic work. Just keep working on it. Just work on making the, the movement and the shooting just so fun because that's your core mechanic. If that part's not fun, then really the rest of the game falls apart. And I feel like it's, it's very close. It's just going to take some tweaking, but you should make it so you can like navigate and shoot without getting trapped or stuck. So yeah, anyway, fantastic game and I can't wait to see how it turns out in the future. So great job. All right, we're moving on to the next game and this is uh, Switch a Room by Steve McWin. This is one game I actually end up coming back and playing a lot and I think it's such a basic game in itself, but it has a lot of potential. So. First off, basically the premise of this game is that you have to, there's an image right here, and you have to notice what's off about the image. And it's it's a really fun premise. It's just kind of like I spy, you know, spot the difference. Like I said, I was surprised by how fun it is. First off, first and foremost, you should make it very clear that this is, this is what you're matching. Because the first time I played, I'm like, okay, this is cool menu art. And I play the game, I'm like, what am I doing? So, so let's just play around, and then th the furniture can be different colors or different sizes. So let's play. So round one, we have to find one thing that's out of place, which is this. All right, yes, I got it right. So you should have some text to, to say like, hey, that's right or correct or whatever, just because um, it's kind of hard. Like you don't, you don't realize if something, if you got it right or not. I didn't, it just let me keep playing. So I'm, I, I kind of assumed, oh man, the timer's going so fast. I think it's the clock that's off. And that's it. So here's the here's another issue. You can play again, you can jump straight back into the game, but you kind of want to look at the menu and how everything's laid out again. So I don't know if you want to show it the room every turn because that's like not fair, I guess. But wh what I noticed about this game is the difficulty curve is really high at first because you have to try to remember everything in the room. But the more you play it, the easier the game gets because you're like, oh, I know that th this thing is that color and whatever. One thought I had is like, what if you started out having a smaller room that you have to try to, to learn and uh, memorize? You have to focus, it's, it's hard. Ah, oh, is it the chair or is it the clock? I don't know. It's the clock, okay. I th yeah, I think the clock is green normally. So round two, the chair is different. Now, another thing is it doesn't show you how many things you're looking for. So um, a lot of times I would I would just lose uh, because I would confirm it and I selected like three items and there was only one thing that needed fixed. So I would just show like right here it says item change two and then it's gone. It's like, oh, okay. So 
Also, I think the timer goes a little fast, especially because you have to remember, you have to find more objects. So items change too. Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay, oh, it's this and then something else. Oh, I think it's the carpet. I think the carpet's green. Yes, wow, all right, cool. Okay, so I have to find three. I love that music pan thing that you do, That that's very cool. So that, that, oh, it's, I'm panicking. Uh, is the desktop different? I don't know. Oh, how did, how did I get that? <laughs> All right, round three, or pff, round six. Um, that's not, it's, it's the chair, it's this thing. Oh, no, no, it's not that, it's this. The timer just stresses you out, man. Or, or was it four that I needed? See, I don't know if, if, that, if I only needed three at that point, if I still needed four, or if I needed four. So I think having something on the menu here, like I love it, it says round one, having something where it shows your goal, uh, I think would just help so much. And maybe slow down the timer, but my thought is when you start out, maybe just have a smaller room. And like maybe instead of showing the room on the menu, and expecting the person to remember it, like maybe have a slide real quick and like in a picture frame of what it should look like and then show it. I know that sounds like it's making it easier, but honestly, it's just, it's too hard to pick up and the game only gets easier over time because I'm playing it and playing it and playing it. You want to reward the player with sound effects and text, fanfare, confetti, that creates that dopamine loop. Like, oh man, I, di I, did, I did it right. You know, I found the chair. Oh, this is awesome. Like. So, and if you don't do it, then it's kind of like, oh, I guess I found it. What's the big deal? Super cool idea. I know it's so ba it's so basic, guys. It's so basic, but it, it, this proves to me that you can take a, just a basic I Spy game and you can make it fun and put your own spin on it. I could just see changing out the furniture. The rooms get more complex as you go on. It shows you a preview of the room and then it, you jump into the room. And it, it, like I said, on the bottom here, it shows how many guesses you need or whatever when you, uh, it shows the next round, maybe add some hierarchy, make like round six or round two, whatever, make that bigger text and then make the, uh, how many guesses a smaller text. So just so there's some hierarchy. And then, like I said, playing again, watch this. If I play again, yeah, I'd make this text bigger. I play again and I don't see what that old room looks like. And it's just, it's hard for me to remember of like, wait, what, what's the room look like? So maybe you just show it briefly. It doesn't have to be for a long time. Just honestly, I'd recommend work on this game a little bit more. I had fun, I played, I played the game a bunch. My wife came in, we played it together. Fun game, so keep working on it. And uh, for 72 hours or whatever, awesome, awesome submission. I like the art too. Yeah, just keep working on it. All right, so the next game that we're gonna be playing is Run by Maximilian. Let's get started, the music's pretty bumping, so let's uh, press any key to start. So it seems like the premise of this game is not to fall. The visuals look really nice. I like the kind of dis distortion on uh, the 3D effect that you use. Oh, 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 oh. I love the, the typeface that you use. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. <laughs> I think the typeface is like, it's like a brutalist uh, constructivist typeface, which it, it works well with the aesthetic. I can tell this game has a lot of polish to it. Oh, like just the explosions and stuff like that. You can tell it's got some juicy post-processing on it. And I love how the enemies kind of evolve. Whoa, okay, that's a, that's a cool animation. It's a fun game. I like the sounds are really punchy. I think the, that shooting sounds a little too loud. It's like a clippy a little. I like how these guys, how if you navigate them, they actually rebuild the floor, which is sweet. So you can use them to your benefit. And then when you get, get into the range of them, they blow up. I will say one thing that I think the game struggles with is um, it's a little dark, so it's har it's kind of hard to tell where the floor and the background is. I would brighten up the background so you can see like, or I'd make the tiles a brighter color or something because I can't tell when I'm falling into a hole. The chromatic aberration looks sweet and like the the kind of the tilt you effect you do on the lens looks it just looks great. Like this game's got a ton of polish. It feels good. It feels nice. And there's some strategy to it as well. Like I like how the enemies that explode rebuild the level. It'd almost be interesting to see this game in like different courses, like different maps. Because playing on the same grid gets a little... I feel like I'm just going around in, in circles kind of. 
Oof. Can I can I beat my high score? Oh, that sound scares me every time I hear it. Really? Honestly? There's not much I can say about it. Great, great sound, great visuals. It fits the theme, it feels intense. I would just work on creating more contrast. You, one thing you want to keep in mind is accessibility when making games. You want to make sure that everyone can play games. It'd be cool if there's like different maps you could play and or, or the maybe the rooms are randomly generated so that the, the terrain just feels different. Really cool idea. I really like the premise. Just honestly, I want to see you do more with it. So if, if that's something you're interested in, definitely do it. So. All right. This is Oh No, A Hole by Snug Pig. Seems like it's a platformer game. I like that sound effect, that So space to jump. Uh, very cool. It's kind of weird. Um, oh no, a hole. Oh. Interesting secrets. I like it. It's interesting using WSD to control. I would figure you'd use arrow keys. One thing I have to say is I like the idea of the shadow. It's like, it's, I, you don't see that very often. Ooh. Why did I jump in the hole? I don't know, that's a great question. I will say that charging sound effect is a little shrill. Woo! Art style is very simple. It almost feels like prototype art, but it totally works. I'm intrigued by why I'm in a hole. And the humor kind of, it, it, it keeps me pushing forward. Whoa, cool secret. I will say the music is, I like it's kind of like a MIDI, it's kind of mysterious. I would say it'd be cool if it like kind of varied a little bit because it feels like it's very similar. What? That's dirty. That's fun though, I like, games are all about creating tension and releasing tension and like getting rid of expectations and the fact that I thought I was going to land on that and I didn't. It's cool, it, it, it shakes up the game. I like that a lot. All right. Oh, I'm nervous, I don't trust any platforms now. Oh. That's the only thing, man. It's just that, oh, that sound effect. Freedom. Oh no, a hole. By Snug Pig Studios. Dash, 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 dash. Main and weak for the board pixel jam. I'm I'm impressed, and it was fun. Honestly, I wanted to keep playing. I mean, for creating it in a week, and I, I don't know. It just it was a, a fun little game. I think one thing I would encourage you to explore is just work on your um, sound effects and just the, just the audio side of things. If you were to take this game and 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 you wanted to continue to work on it, think about how you could flush out mechanics more. But I thought it was cool that you hid the spikes and I didn't feel like I didn't feel like anything was getting old or, or tiring maybe work with the controls like maybe use arrow keys as well I, for me personally arrow keys and space is a lot more natural than WASD in space but I could be wrong obviously the story you know didn't make any sense but it was just fun this the commentary did kind of add to the gameplay so great work and um yeah fantastic job that's all the games that we'll be playing today if for some reason your game wasn't picked and you feel offended, please don't be. There were so many great submissions and I just had to pick the ones that felt the most interesting or the ones I could give the best feedback for for this video. But other than that, if you guys have any good constructive feedback, please write it down in the comments down below. It really helps the developers when people give feedback. It helps them see in their blind spots where things need to be fixed. And just be civil about it. Be nice because this is a community where we build each other up. And just being rude and saying something sucks doesn't help them at all it just makes you look like a jerk and don't do that don't be, don't be a jerk okay and i also want to say if you like this video make sure to like and subscribe if you didn't like this video that's totally okay our your regular uh, scheduled program will resume soon i also just want to give a huge shout out to heath Sargent, james albert skides and rye bread and the rest of the fantastic patreon supporters you guys are awesome and i appreciate you so much then i'll see you on the next game dev adventure adios